All right, Joe, you want to give the roll call, please? Mr. Livingston? Here. <coughs> Mr. Nath? Mr. Declawa? Mr. Lennon? Here. Ms. Cimaroli? Here. Mr. Tolmer? Here. All right, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Um, I take a, a motion to uh, accept the, uh, adopt the minutes from the August 1st, 2020 meeting. Anybody? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion, questions, comments regarding the minutes? No. All in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Minutes are adopted. Okay, next on the agenda, old business. Um, comprehensive plan concept discussion regarding uh, pedestrian safety recommendations. Um, Justine and I walked around on Wednesday, um, September 16th. Um, we walked up, up and down Bank Street and walked down, walked along Washington Avenue. Um, you know, there, there's a, there's a, some of the crosswalks are marked, some of them aren't, um, and I'm certainly not, um, certainly not proposing that we mark every crosswalk, um, but I think um, signage helps or would help with some of them. Um, you know, we walked down Station Railroad Street and Station Street and, and Washington and, and um, I, I'm just kind of curious, Joe, maybe you can answer this, maybe you can't, maybe Larry can, can chime in. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, what rhyme or reason how crosswalks are marked in the borough. What was, you know, what was the determining factor for, for marking crosswalks? Um, any idea? I couldn't answer that. No, I have no clue. Um, you know, there's, there's signage for, um, on Washington Avenue, there's signage for the one that's right in front of, um, Bridgeville Appliance, but it's only signed coming from the north. There's no signs coming from the south. And the signs um, right in front of the, the, the crosswalk sign right in front of Bridgeville Appliance is literally obstructed by the banner that's hanging there. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I don't know what the best way to approach this is but I think there needs to be some thought process that goes into <clears throat> um, looking at, at what crosswalks are marked and you know where we where we wanted where we think signage should go with some of this stuff. And I'm not sure what the best approach for it is. Yeah, let me make a couple of comments here. And Joe sent the letter to PennDOT. Uh, asking them to consider uh, a pedestrian safety analysis for Bridgeville. And most of what you've mentioned, Dale, are PennDOT roads. So, uh, and I don't, I don't know how they're going to respond to that, Joe. I don't suspect you've heard anything back from them as yet. No. Uh, but they're going to have to reply to that. And let, let's be positive. Let's assume that they say, yeah, we agree and we have money and we're going to do pedestrian safety analysis for pen dot roads within the borough. Uh, my suspicion is that will then lead to a series of meetings and we can revisit those issues with them at that time, the ones you mentioned. Uh, I think what falls on our shoulders specifically is to discuss what the appropriate marking and or signage would be for pedestrian safety on the roads that the borough owns. And uh, 
to me, the first step of doing that is identifying what, if any, borough roads actually have an issue that we need to address, pedestrian safety uh, that we would need to address. Uh, we kind of touched on this last month, but to me, that, that's where we have to start. And uh, I'll, con I'll confess, I, I'm not aware of any. That doesn't mean by any stretch of imagination that there aren't any borough streets that need to be addressed. Uh, just that I'm, my own personal ignorance is I don't know which ones they might be uh, or where. I mean, and maybe you do it by, as opposed to a street, you do it by intersections. Um, so I, I think that's probably our first step is what do we as a borough need to address? Where, where are there issues that, uh, that we know that there is a potential pedestrian safety issue? So look at and address. I have a question. So if you're looking at Dewey, which I'm assuming is a borough road that hits Bank Street, which is a state road, how does that work? I mean, if there is an opportunity to improve the safety of that crosswalk, how does that work? Do you know? Well, I would suspect the mere fact that it intersects with the state road that it's going to come under the auspices of the state plan, and we would look okay. for them to address that and, and undertake and subsidize any expense of A, the study, and B, the improvements. Okay. So right. given, the, given the fact that we probably have limited resources ourselves, uh, I would tend to think that we want to look at the things that are in our control that we think need to be addressed. Okay. Now, Justine, I mean, that, that's, that's a bit of a supposition. We're, we're hoping that PennDOT's going to react positively uh, to our request. Right. So I guess we have to wait and hear what they have to say. Joe, I mean, your letter just went out, what, the beginning of September, correct? Correct, on the 8th. Yeah, and we probably need to give them at least a month, if not a little bit longer, to reply. Uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to follow up with an email that, hey, I sent you the letter. Uh, who did you guys receive it? Is it under consideration? You know, yada, yada, do what they say. But I, I would give them some time. I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't think I'd follow up right now, but I think I'd give them at least a month to reply personally. And then sure. follow up. So I would do it. Okay. Is, is Bower Hill a state road or is that borough? It's, it's a county, borough and so. county. Yeah. Okay. It's from McLaughlin Run to Bower Hill Road or to Washington Pike is Bridgeville's. Right. Oh, okay. And then from PJ's Deli all the way up to Mile 11 and it's county. Okay. So the, the intersection there by Station Street, that would be a primary example. That's ours. Right. Okay. So any, anyone trying to cross Fire Hill Road to get to the uh, soft serve or to get to the fire right. department, that's on, that's on us. So we would need to assess that, determine what improvements need to be made. Again, signage, crosswalks, whatever. Is there a possibility for a crosswalk in front of the Dairy Delight? I wouldn't know why there wouldn't be. So... That I mean that was that's been brought up in the past at council meeting, um, and you know one of the issues that you have with putting one there, um, and I'm not say I mean obviously it's it, you see people parking on that side and then crossing over there all summer, um, but the but the issue is there's no sidewalk there, right? So you're you're basically have a crosswalk. If you have a crosswalk that goes over there, what's it crossing to? to Are you going from parking, parking lot? lot to parking lot there? What's that? You're going from parking lot to parking lot? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, it's, it's the question has been raised at, at previous council meetings a, a few years back uh, by a resident. Um, you know, we went round and round and, you know, it, it makes sense that there should be, you know, because people are using it anyway. I mean, we all, I mean, everybody crosses at their own risk there. Um, but, and it would make sense to see if you could do something 
But again, like I said, there's no sidewalk on that side of the street. Basically from, from the from railroad all the way up to uh, to Washington Pike, you know, there's not a sidewalk. Well, there's a sure. sidewalk that ends at the vet driveway coming yeah, down. Basically at the top of the driveway. It, yeah. it wraps around and it stops right there. So so they, you know so the way it's it stands like so if you're walking down Railroad Street and you want to go to the borough building, what you're supposed to do is go up to the corner across from Sill Hall Lumber, use that crosswalk there to the sidewalk, and then walk up. But I mean, I, I, no way I would do that. I would never do that. Right. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut lines, across and, you know. The, the, the sight lines and, and the number of lanes at, at that crosswalk are just horrendous. Right. And, and that's that's one of the, the, the crosswalks that, you know, the, the borough we should look at seriously. Absolutely, I agree with you. So, so, so that's the first step. We've identified one intersection uh, or one area, if you will, that we know has a significant problem. That, that, you know, just addressing that specifically, Joe, uh, I suspect, although I don't know this to be the case, that PennDOT probably has guidance documents that speak specifically to uh, pedestrian safety and what should be done and uh, what things you should measure uh, and may well talk about you know, the issue that Mike raises about parking lot to parking lot or, or what have you. I think we need to get our hands on that document and look and see. And again, this goes back to the issue that we talked about last month. Is this the kind of thing uh, that we as planning commission members are comfortable and uh, I use the word educated enough to take on and do ourselves, or is this the kind of thing that we need to farm out to a professional? I don't have an answer to that question. I'd like to think that it's something that we could do, uh, but then the flip side of that is a liability issue. You know, we do the wrong thing, we paint the cross rock walk in the wrong place, or make the wrong recommendation, and somebody gets hurt. You know. It becomes an issue, so I think that's something we really need to try to understand. All right. Well, I mean, the fact that you're I here, think, uh, sorry, Mike, that's I think right. the first thing to do is to identify those intersections that we think that, that belong to the borough that we need to address as a point of beginning. Go ahead, Mike. No, I say just because. I mean, the fact the fact that the dairy light is there, you know. You know, open all summer, you know, all spring and summer into the fall, and you have such heavy foot traffic. It makes sense to look at that just for that purpose alone. Right, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I'm hard pressed to think of better examples than that. I, I mean, are there any out there that anybody can think of off, off the top of their heads? Or? That that's the worst one. I mean. The, the only other other thought process I had, and Justine and I talked about this when we were, when we were walking around, is you know access to um, the, the borough parks, right? Um, you know McLaughlin Run Park, for instance. Um, you know there's a situation again where you're walking down the sidewalk and all of a sudden you're walking across the driveway of you know um, a, a business. And there's no marking for the sidewalk. There's no um, indication that you know pedestrian. It's you know a pedestrian use type thing. And to use the sidewalk across the street, which would be the north side of McLaughlin Run, is fine till you get all the way down to the corner by the bridge. And then again, you're running into to sight lines and and you know. Um, just a horrible situation, especially for kids, if you're going to have kids cross. You know, what, what, the thought that occurs to me when you talk about those, Dale, uh, and if you look at McLaughlin Run or if you look at Chartier's Park, uh, you have to cross two PennDOT roads. And we start into this analysis, uh, we may find ourselves buying sidewalks. We may yeah. find ourselves having to install sidewalks somewhere. Uh, and there is no sidewalk going down to Chartier's Park, and that's a pretty nasty place to try to cross. It's bad enough in a car. I can't imagine wanting to walk across there and then down the hill. Yeah. Uh, 
And I don't know. <clears throat> I suspect the borough's not interested in building stairs uh, from uh, from the road all the way down into the park. You know, to match up with some intersection. That would be a pretty expensive undertaking. So, you know, I guess we need to be cognizant of that. You know, this discussion could well lead to something like that. Well, and, and isn't there some some plan or something for PennDOT to be doing some work along the hillside there by uh, Chartiers Park on Chartiers Street in the near future? If that's the case, that'd be a great opportunity. The landslide work in 2024. So, okay. Joe, to your point with the landslide work, um, you know, we heard that they were doing there was going to be work to be done on the bridge at the south end. You know, we kind of approached Pendon and said, hey, look, you're going to be doing X amount of work. You know, can we look at this project as a, as, as a bigger project and figure out what we can do? If they're going to be doing landside work and doing that whole hillside, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to put, you know, a, a dedicated pathway, you know, that goes from Treacherous Park and to connect downtown bridge hill i don't know maybe something's handicap accessible so, something because that'd be huge because you could sit there we could you could talk to you know to south fayette and say look you know we have a, we have an opportunity here to connect newberry with your new plan up in mayview and the only part that's the linchpin is getting through ridgeville and if we can solve that now your residents can walk a mile up the road to, to connect your, your neighborhoods. It's a good thought, Mike. Mm -hmm. In 2024, that's not too far away. No, right. it's not. We start having those conversations now and see where it takes us. Yeah. It, the only other intersection I could that was has been brought up at council meetings, and I don't know how much of an issue it is, but um, the intersection of Fire Hill Road and Washington Pike. We've had people complain about that intersection in the past. Yeah. Well, that's it. it you know, and. and Honestly, that's, that is another one because um, if you're trying to cross Bower Hill Road from north to south, you have to walk 50 feet up to push the button and then walk back. Yeah. There, isn't a, there isn't a crosswalk indicator activator close to the... I was kind of surprised they didn't didn't fix that when they were doing the the smart imaging or smart yeah. traffic stuff. Yeah, you would think they would have addressed that when they did the signal installation. Yeah, that's the time to do that. So, explain that to me again, Dale. What do you have to do? When if you if you're walking from the borough building up right. to um, Washington Avenue, right. you have to continue to the north. I, 50 feet or so. So you have to go down by that bus station or by the bus stop. About, about three quarters of the way to that to push the button. Okay. You have to walk back and wait for the wait for the traffic light and then, you know, wait for traffic to let you cross during, you know, when you get the pedestrian signal to cross. Got it. So. I have a question. Do we in Bridgeville know exact know the number of auto accidents or pedestrian access, accidents that have occurred in Bridgeville, like within the past ten years? Just so we can get an idea as to, in reality, where are the most dangerous uh, crosswalks or areas in Bridgeville? I would think there's police reports on that, wouldn't there be, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, there is. I, I can ask the chief. Okay. Speaking of, wasn't there just one in front of Jackalope the other day or a week ago? I think Friday night. Okay. Yeah. 
And that's, that's another situation where, you know, coming from, coming south on Washington Avenue, there's signs for the crosswalk. Coming north from South Fayette, there's no signage for, for pedestrian crosswalks at all. I mean, they've got the, the sign in the middle of the street, that portable one. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's, there's nothing, you know, further back. Oh, and that would probably be a good place to look at, you know, putting some signage up for the, at least the crosswalks in Washington. And, and I think that what, when we attended that meeting in July, didn't they say that flashing lights in crosswalks on state roads are acceptable? Yeah, they are. Okay. It, it, it was it was one of those things that was you know um, it had to do with the number of pedestrian crossings and and, right. and and that type of thing. You're talking like the flashers that they have up in Mount Lebanon. Right. Right. And again, I don't know if that's you know PennDOT's responsibility or the borough's responsibility. Well, I think it's our responsibility, yeah. but. I mean, at least we can look at it, in my opinion. But. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, I, I think at some point in time, I, I think for at least starters, um, you know, trying to put together some, some budget for, for at least some signage for, for existing crosswalk would be a good, a good idea for next year. Anybody else? Yeah, it shouldn't be. I mean, that's you're not. We're, I don't think we're talking a lot of money just to put signage. Well, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what it what it takes to you know how much each sign is, and then there's the labor to install it and that type of thing. Uh, Twenty thousand dollars? I don't know. <clears throat> I, I don't think it'd be that high. Okay. Well. You're the numbers guy. If you want to throw something at the at the um, at the council for for at least budgeting for something like that for next year, you got it. I'll take care of it. Okay. Um, anything else with pedestrian safety right now? Uh, I guess I'm inclined to just until, until we get something back from PennDOT, let this one kind of rest. Um, well, again, Dale, I, I, if we can, uh, if we could assemble a list of, of the borough intersections, we've got to start on it tonight at least. Yeah. Uh, it, just a, a list of intersections. Uh, maybe that comes out of the police reports that Joe's going to uh, get from the chief. But just so we all have a feel, if we can come up with a list, that would be a great place to start in my mind. I agree. We already have one. and. I suspect there's probably two or three others that are that are going to be added to that list fairly quickly. So, okay. Um, Joe, you want to talk about the comprehensive plan update? Uh, sure. I sent uh, council a draft RFP uh, a couple days ago, or and planning commission. I'm looking for any feedback. Uh, I know last meeting we wanted to see if we could get any interest from our neighbors for a multi municipal plan. Touch base with Collier, Upper St. Clair, and South Fayette. Uh, Collier, the planning commission wasn't interested, but they were going to take it to the board of commissioners and get back to me. But they, the manager said typically they just follow the recommendation of the planning commission. So that, that doesn't look very favorable. Upper St. Clair, uh, their manager said that they're halfway through their current plan. They, they don't need to update theirs. So right now they're not interested. Uh, South Fayette said they're interested more in a plan specific to their own municipality, but welcomed the idea of what they called a corridor plan for something just, you know, at the gateway. So uh, I want to go back to the state to see, hey, you know, hey, we exhausted all our efforts for multi-municipal planning. Uh, what else do we got to do to look favorable to get grant funding to, to make a, a plan update? So uh, the RFP, I wouldn't mind sitting on for a while, 
just so I hear what the state's going to recommend for grant money, because the project's going to be anywhere from fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars, according to the DCD planner, on, on what these plans cost. And uh, I sent you that update from him. So it really makes sense that we try to get grant funding uh, into this project. Um, that's where we're at with that. Uh, I know it's it's the start of budget season right now for Borough Council. Uh, I'm a good way through the draft budget for next year. Uh, I did put money in for to start the comp plan in phases. So uh, once we have a draft plan, we'll get it with our, our, our a draft budget. We'll get with the finance committee and rest of council and see what the buy-in is to proceed with that. So uh, that's where we are with the comp plan project. So at least uh, looks like hopefully the money can be taken care of to start phasing it in, worst case by ourselves but I really would like to give us some time to exhaust some grant avenues. Thank and then you. regarding that RFP, I kind of just mirrored our whole planning exercises over the past year. That really set the priorities of what the, where the borough is and what, what our objectives are. So it, when you look at like the work plan within the comp plan RFP, it kind of touches on each slide uh, that we worked on earlier in the year. So. Uh, that effort really set the framework of what we want the comp plan uh, update to be. So that's where that was. Well, and to kind of follow up on that, I mean, you know, what we did was just look at, you know, the past comp plan and, and look at the stuff that hadn't been touched or hadn't really been examined or followed through with. So, um, you know, if we can update some of that thing, some of that information and, and um, you know, take some bite-sized pieces along the way, I think we'll go, Yeah, so, so we're on the right track. At least uh, that's my opinion. I'd be open to hear what everyone else says. I'm on the board of that. The only question in my mind, and it's something we've touched on before, Joe, is what your sense is uh, for, you know, how many years it's going to take to get through this and then what a, an annual application will be. And I, I don't know that we need to address that right now, but, you know, that's going to be part of the whole process, I think. So is it a three-year process or longer or shorter, in which case then we know what to request from borough council. So, but at least setting an allocation to get the process started next year, I think is a good thing because, you know, by the time we get through this, you know, going through the RFP, marking that up, getting it out in the street, getting replies back and then hiring somebody, truthfully, it's gonna be fairly deep in the next year. Uh, before we have somebody on board, we're going to be spending the money. So at least that would be my thinking. Mm -hmm. I would agree. And then uh, we got the list of all the planning consultants from the state. We have an I estimate of what they cost. We have an RFP done. So everything's ready. We just need to make it once we have the budget set for next year, make sure we, we, we have the money. Right now, everything's looking good. I'm still waiting on a couple of figures. Get council support. Then, then we can throw it out there and see see where the chips lie. I promise you I'd get a look at that, so I will get to that. Thank you. One of the things that I uh, noticed was that there was no environmental impact statement in your RFP. So is there some way that we could consider a section or is this just pre-planning so that we can consider that you know there are environmental impacts to what we're doing today that need to be addressed for the future i mean like shade trees and uh, uh, flooding impacts and that sort of thing watershed management I think it's something we could add to the work plan. You see, we, we touch on everything under the sun, so. Right, right. I, I think it's a good suggestion. I mean, because it's not gonna get it, in my opinion, it's not gonna get any better in whatever we can do to address minimizing what Bridgeville can do. Like even picking up litter, I was looking at Upper St. Clair's comp plan. They even talk about picking up after yourself so it doesn't go down the storm drains and into the watershed, so. Joe, I think the I would use the term environmental assessment as opposed to 
environmental impact statement because that's a term of art uh, that, that has one hell of a big price tag associated with okay. it. Okay. So environmental assessment, I think Good. is exactly, you know, so for each and everything that we look at, just look at the environmental impact and generally assess what its impact is likely to be. Okay. Positive or negative, so. I think we lost Dale. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're right. He's gone. I was like, someone's gone, but I couldn't figure out who <laughs> yeah. was. It's his screen. He froze up yeah. and then he, he he dropped out. So yeah. I don't know what he's got the agenda, huh? We can't do anything without our fearless leader. Yeah. <laughs> We're like a ship without a rudder. Uh, there, there really wasn't much left after that. It was, was just, it, to tell you the yeah, truth. The, yeah. The well, next thing was just an update for what we have for next month's meeting. The October meeting is going to be pretty busy for planning commission. Uh, the plan is to have kind of like a quasi joint meeting with planning commission and borough council uh, to go over the proposed long-term flood mitigation plan that the engineers have been working on. So is that going to be live Joe at the borough building? I, I, I think Dale is still one zoom. So probably on zoom. It, it really? would probably be best in person, but uh, yeah, I think so personally. Dale, Dale was wanting Zoom, so but anyway, we, we can make it hall. happen. Yeah, but the the plan looks pretty good, so it's just now getting some public involvement. That that's the plan was to get uh, planning commission involved into the capital planning. So it, it, it's what we were hoping for. Good. All right. So that, that's all I had. I know I don't think there was anything else that we had to. Is there any public on. comment? I don't. I, I everybody look is. <clears throat> I don't think there's anybody here from the public that wants to speak. Before we get there, wasn't there something on the uh, chicken ordinance? Oh. Uh, no, we should hopefully have a draft ordinance for you guys to look over at next month's meeting. Uh, the solicitor was authorized to prepare a draft uh, ordinance that just council meeting last week or two weeks ago. So hopefully for the October meeting, we'll have a draft. Yeah, I uh, just in retrospect and uh, honestly listening to what Dick had to say, and, and truthfully, he was spot on in his comments, I thought, uh, and the things that he illustrated. Uh, my personal view uh, is evolving to that, you know, if we're gonna uh, allow something like that, you're gonna have to have some kind of a permit an annually renewable permit uh, with a substantial fee and a fee that's sufficient enough to allow for proper inspection to make sure that there's compliance. Uh, just my thinking, uh, you know, it's he, he's right. Something like that could become a nuisance in a heck of a heck of a hurry, uh, and we just have to guard against that. Larry, I think last month you made the recommendation and whether or not it's applicable to this situation or not, as to whether or not you could go to your neighbors to ask for their, quote, approval. I don't know if you actually said, but I used to live in townhouses and everything that we did had to get a sign off sheet Right. from our neighbors saying I could build a deck or I could do this. And I don't know if that's legally acceptable in a community like Bridgeville or not, but it sure would get more than just the homeowner wanting to raise chickens involved. Yeah, it's kind of like it's different with townhouses uh, where you have to have those approvals. This would almost be a zoning ordinance where you would have to post it. Okay. And you would have to uh, obtain input of the, when I say post it, you would post it in the neighborhood uh, and take, uh, solicit comment from the people that would be directly impacted and then consider their comments. Uh, I mean, positive or negative. I imagine if you're going to get comments, you're more likely to get negative than you are co uh, positive in that kind of a situation. So then what do you do with that? Uh, but I think if, if we're going to entertain the thoughts of allowing this, 
even if you had public comment, you're going to have to have a set of regulations that people right. have to adhere to, and you're going to have to have the ability to measure compliance with those. Uh, and if they're not complying, to be able to shut them down. Uh, and I think coming up with those regulations is going to be a fairly significant lift, truthfully. You know, I know that there's one person in the borough that does it now, and my suspicion is that <laughs> it goes unnoticed by and large. I mean, there might be some people that say something about it. I don't know. Uh, but this is this is going to be a an interesting discussion, to say the least. <laughs> but again, I'm still I'm of the opinion that we're going to allow it annual permits with an annual permit being frankly i'm thinking something like 500 bucks that would cover any inspections so if joe as a building inspector had to go out you know once a month or once a quarter or whatever to make sure that they're in compliance uh, that the borough isn't responsible for that cost that the people that want to uh, have the chickens would be paying for that that's and, a, lot of, a lot of eggs there. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it makes it, 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 it certainly makes it cost, cost prohibitive. You're right. But, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, again, I think back to what Dick said. And honestly, I mean, I know the situation he's talking about, and I have to completely agree with him. And in fairness to Dick, you think about the money he invested in that house and have to put up with that. It's just, it's got to be maddening to him. And he's kept his mouth shut by and large for a lot of years until last month. So, anyhow, it's uh, basically that's what really all I had to say, Joe. So, we will get something from the solicitor to consider and start talking about what our thinking is, I guess. Correct. Uh, the, the hope is that you would have that for next month's meeting. Not necessarily for immediate action, just for start of the discussion. Correct. Okay. Well, it seems like there's the oh. going to be a few, quite a bit of, of stuff for next month's meeting, and and you know we may get it and get the information and table it till the next meeting. I don't know. Depends on how long the flood mitigation stuff takes and. I suspect that issue in and of itself is going to demand a lot of attention and a lot of thought. So, yeah, that's a meeting in and of itself. Yep. So I apologize. I I lost internet connection and oh, Bill's back. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know that you missed me, Mike. <laughs> so, okay. Um, is there any other? New business. Okay, um, I just wanted to visit with you guys a little bit. Justine and I attended a, a webinar about building a, a strong planning commission. Um, and it was pretty much geared towards the, um, the um, governing bodies. There were more more uh, council people in attendance than there were planning commissioners. So they, they geared their discussion and stuff more towards um, the governing bodies types. Um, one of the things that, that um, you know, they kind of went through the history of, of the planning commissions and, and how planning commissions came to be. Um, they they kind of talked about uh, zoning talked about comp plans, comprehensive plans, and, and the importance of that. Um, they talked about, um, you know, an official map for the jurisdiction. And I presume that we have one. It's not just, you know, they say it's not just a zoning map, but it's a map that shows, you know, the zoning, you know, resources and the parks and streets and, and that type of thing. Um, I'm presuming that we have one. Or is I it think you find that in our current comprehensive plan would be my guess. Okay. Probably a series of different maps in there. Yeah. So, um, and, and the, the one thing that, that um, 
you know, the, the one thing that I, that I get out, out, out of this whole thing is, is um, you know, um, it, it, the whole, the whole um, planning commission thing, there's a Pennsylvania Munici Municipalities Planning Code, the PCMP, PC, PMPC, um, which kind of outlines, um, you know, what planning commission is supposed to do, um, responsibilities. Um, one of the things that, that they talked about there was an annual uh, report that the planning commission is supposed to make to the governing, governing, governing authority. And I don't know if this has been done in the past. Um, it's supposed to be done in March. Uh, and I, I got the impression that it's supposed to be done in writing. Um, uh, Joe, are you aware of this? Mike, Tomer, you? Oh. Okay. Well, I'm not sorry. It, it's, it's one of those things. I, I didn't realize that it's, it's, you know, laid out and specified that it's supposed to get done. Um, it, it'll be really easy this year, um, you know, with all the planning and stuff and, and laying supposed to address what we've done in the past and what we're looking to do in the future. Um, so, um, Justine, you got any notes or anything you want to add anything about the... Well, the one thing that I, one of the things that I got out of it, which I thought was important for me as a new B in this planning commission is that they had an outline of what documents a new member of the planning commission should receive in order to do their job. And it was the zoning uh, documents. It was the comprehensive plan. It was the map, the community map. Um, anything that might be uh, uh, packaged together for a new member. So I think that's a great idea. And I know it's just a matter of pulling all of that information together and doing a checklist so that we know that the next member of the planning committee has all the tools to, that can help them. So. And they also talked about doing an indoctrination for new members. Right, and mentoring, right. Mentoring, yeah. So. Which I thought was interesting. It's, it's um, you know, I came on the planning commission. I had already had experience, but, um, you know, uh, Justine and, and uh, Tim, um, you know, came in, um, you know, eager to do stuff, but not really sure how, how things are done or, you know, who's, what's, where's, why's. And, and I think, you know, um, maybe I'll sit down with Joe at some point in time and we'll try and work on some sort of, um, checklist and, and indoctrination type um, plan. That's it for me. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go around the horn here. Mike, you got anything to add? Okay, Larry? Nope, I'm good. Okay, um, we have any guests that have a, have a need to Speak. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else. Joe, do you have anything? Any final? No deal. Okay. Well, then I'm going to adjourn the meeting. And um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all for being here and participating, and we'll see you next month.